So uh, our speaker, Professor Lisa uh, Lacoste, uh, Lacoste, she has acted in different national and international positions of a trust, including the Finnish Government Research and Innovation Council. Currently, she's a member of the Human Rights uh, Committee of the Council of Venice Academic. She also uh, she is also working at the Nordic Africa Institute um, Institute University of Uppsala in Sweden. Her research interests covers Africa, world politics, the uh, democratization, inter international development policies, and the crisis management policies of the European Union. We are all excited to listen to you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Uh, um, it's, um, I, I tried to share my slides. Um, it's a great pleasure to participate in this panel. Uh, thank you, Head Mufaf, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Alan, uh, for uh, inviting me. And uh, it's, uh, it's also good to uh, continue after uh, Professor Kada Amer's uh, speech, because uh, indeed uh, much of these uh, uh, topics, uh, what I'm going to re uh, going to speak, uh, relate also to the to her observations. Uh, before joining the Nordic Africa Institute, I served uh, uh, three years as a rector of the University of Tampere in Finland. And before that, I was uh, six years uh, dean of the University of Helsinki in Finland. And, uh, and that's my, my um, uh, experiences from the, from the university leadership are as something I would like to share with you. Um, first of all, um, at the moment, um, we know that uh, uh, according to the Times Higher Education statistics, uh, only one in six universities worldwide are led by a woman. Uh, a typical uh, rector or president of a university is a man, 62 years old and a scientist. However, there are a lot of uh, variation. In Europe, uh, about 60% uh, of universities are led by women. North America, US is leading in this uh, sense, almost a quarter of universities are led by, by women. In, in the Middle East, uh, the percentage of uh, it, the percentage is 5%. But uh, let me say that in my own country, in Finland, where women also had uh, a right to vote very early, already in uh, 19, uh, 1906, which was a time when women, women also were able to run as candidates to the parliament. So we were even more advanced than New Zealand. But at the moment, women's representation uh, in the university leadership is very low. Of the 13 universities we have in Finland, only one is uh, led by a woman. And it's a Tampere University where I was previously. So now there is a fourth uh, uh, women rector at the University of Tampere, but all the other universities are led by men. At the moment in Helsinki University, there is a female rector, but uh, she is acting rector only. So of the top universities, indeed, 19% uh, had, uh, had, uh, had a female uh, leader. What is maybe also interesting is that uh, female rectors more often represent uh, humanities, arts, and social sciences. Uh, although, um, uh, as we heard also, women's uh, 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 representation in the, uh, in, the, in the sciences and engineering is increasing, but, uh, but that is a clear difference in, in, the, in the leadership at the moment. My own area also is uh, social sciences. I come from political science. And uh, indeed, uh, what uh, Professor uh, 
Kada Amer was also saying, why does it matter? It matters because um, universities are still male-dominated uh, institutions and, uh, and we need uh, examples. Uh, women leaders are examples for uh, young uh, scholars, for, for students. Um, and it's also important for a good leadership to pre bring different perspectives, uh, uh, to, bring, to bring diversity uh, to the leadership. Uh, we also know that uh, gender equality and uh, women's education in, in particular do contribute to economic growth and human development. Um, and um, women's participation in the leadership does has an impact in the uh, culture in recruitment, how research resources are allocated, even peer review processes when uh, uh, scientific uh, 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 publications um, and um, uh, outcomes of uh, research uh, projects are assessed uh, even with regard to the number of citations. We, we know that uh, there is a bias at the moment in, in, the, uh, in the academic uh, culture. Globally, women represent less than 30% of the world's leaders, world's uh, researchers. And uh, this, of course, means that uh, a lot of potential uh, capacity and resource is uh, underutilized. Um, what I would like to uh, uh, speak also are the different uh, initiatives and uh, networks that have been created in order to enhance uh, women's participation. UNESCO, of course, is a very important global actor I'm just uh, mentioning some of the UNESCO initiatives uh, as examples. There are much more, but uh, gender equality uh, was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, noted as a global priority in 2007. Um, UNESCO is, uh, has since 2008 uh, 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 published uh, gender report uh, as part of uh, the global education monitoring uh, report. So they are producing very clear statistics all over the world uh, about the uh, improvements or, or, the or the status of uh, gender equality at different levels of education. Um, there is also an organization for women in science for the developing world, um, which, uh, which was uh, founded um, already in the 1980s uh, under the World Academy of Sciences, but it's also uh, uh, hosted by, uh, by UNESCO. Um, Dialogue on gender equality in artificial uh, intelligence is one example, and International Day of Women and Girls uh, and uh, Her Education, Our Future, Future Campaign. These are just examples of um, UNESCO's activities. But then there are also other networks, and one, one network I was also happy to participate is World Women University President's Forum, which uh, was launched uh, uh, 20 years ago and uh, which has held uh, eight forums every second year, I think, uh, uh, since then. This picture uh, I have included here was taken in Wuhan uh, two and a half years ago. Um, it was uh, 
initiated by uh, Communication University of China, and uh, China has been uh, uh, the uh, China had, uh, the the uh, biannual forums have been uh, uh, have been arranged in in, in China and um, in Taiwan uh, in Tokyo once, but um, but these um, uh, these have been supported by. Uh, by the by the government of China, which uh, in a way it represents, uh, I think, uh, Chinese soft di diplomacy also, but uh, but very uh, uh, comprehensively brings um, uh, rectors and presidents of universities together from all over the world. Also, there have been sub forums of this world. Uh, right university presidents forum i'm i'm just uh, listing here uh, the ones that have been arranged uh, so that you can see how well it is covering the world from new zealand uh, 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 japan uh, us uh, turkey zimbabwe mexico nepal and uh, the one that was arranged in 2016. Uh, Nordic Subforum sub, sub, sub was arranged in at, at Tampere University at the time when I was uh, uh, president there. Um, these kind of uh, networks where women can share their experiences when leading uh, academic institutions and uh, and when uh, trying to uh, change also the culture within these uh, institutions uh, have been uh, very valuable and uh, and have been have uh, the the specific uh, Focus has been in, in in this networking has been to encourage uh, uh, particularly younger women younger women to to take uh, such positions of uh, of responsibilities um, at the universities. Then also there is a European Women Rectors Association which was established in two thousand and fifteen. Um, uh, I think it's what's remarkable is that uh, that these are quite recent uh, phenomena and quite recent uh, networks when you compare to many other women's uh, movements. And uh, this European network uh, is closely working with the European Commission and uh, really trying to push for all actions for gender equality in, in academic work. Um, I think my, my third example of, uh, of this kind of important uh, networks is uh, women at leadership uh, theory to practice uh, network which um, brings uh, women uh, from the MENA region uh, in particular together and uh, they have also a, sub a program women in higher education management WHEM. Um, I'm just uh, listing here uh, the publications uh, which are really worthwhile for, for, for you to look through about gender power and management cross-cultural analysis in higher, of higher education, then generation and gender in academia, then gendered success in higher education from a global perspective, and then gender and power in higher education. Um, why does this all matter? I, I only can support 
the previous uh, speaker that uh, equality does affect the quality of research and higher education. And uh, in that way, it can also enhance the impact of uh, uh, higher education. And uh, I just want to go back to one of my slides, which I went uh, through too quickly, which, uh, which uh, relates to the impacts of COVID. Uh, I think that there are also, probably there has been also opportunities for women uh, to participate more actively when they can work remotely. However, the fact that uh, women do spend more time on childcare and uh, have had more responsibilities, for instance, for children's homeschooling than men, are probably, have probably affected uh, the fact that uh, they have had less time for research and publication when compared to the male colleagues. Also, it often is so that women have bigger teaching burdens than men have. So we have evidence, unfortunately, that uh, during this year, women's academic outputs in scientific journals have, de have decreased. And uh, there is also evidence that there is a bias towards men experts in media coverage of COVID-19, even though the uh, effects of the pandemic, of course, do concern both genders uh, equally. So uh, this is my, my last concern, why I also think that uh, really uh, enhancing women's uh, opportunities in science and uh, higher education are the key uh, for us to overcome also such uh, challenges as COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Lisa. That was really very interesting. For me, education is the key for my future.